name is Dr. Michael Bach. I'm a double fellowship trained orthopedic surgeon at Southern California Orthopedic Institute. And I specialize in sports medicine, arthroscopic surgery. In this video, I will be discussing meniscus tears. The meniscus is a C-shaped cartilage disc deep inside the knee. Each knee has two discs, one on the inside and one on the outside. The inside disc is called the medial meniscus. The outside disc is called the lateral meniscus. They really act as shock absorber pads for your knee, just like the shock absorber pads in your car. They protect your knee from the impact and shear forces of everyday life and athletic activities. As the shock absorber pads in your knee, the meniscus protect your knee from all the bumps and bruises of daily life. Certain forces can actually rip or tear the meniscus so that instead of being one solid piece of cartilage, it can tear and become two pieces of tissue or sometimes even more. Once it tears, it often doesn't have the necessary blood supply to heal and these tears will often persist. Unlike a cut in your skin which bleeds and heals itself in a few days, meniscus tears don't bleed and heal themselves and will tend to persist over time. In that way they act like hangnails. They hang around and bother people. They bother people more with increased activity and less with less activity. Meniscus tears most often occur with day-to-day -day activities in life. For example, even simple things like bending over to pick something off from the ground can cause a meniscus tear. Any motion that puts the meniscus at stress, bending, squatting, twisting, can potentially cause a tear. High level sports activities, such as sports like basketball, football, can result in traumatic injuries to the meniscus. Common symptoms of meniscal tears include pain with twisting, squatting, or kneeling. Patients will often say they have pain when they roll over in bed or make quick turns. They may even feel a click or a pop with activities. Often patients will notice increased swelling with these activities. If the tear is in the posterior or back part of the meniscus, patients will notice pain in the back of the knee with fully straightening or bending the knee. Detailed history and good physical exam are the first best steps to diagnosing a meniscal tear. Oftentimes, these first steps will then help decide whether an MRI is indicated to confirm the diagnosis. An MRI or magnetic resonance imaging study is a non-radiation test which can look deep inside the knee safely and see whether the meniscus cartilage is torn. The test takes about 45 minutes and will give detailed information about the knee. If patients have a meniscus tear, there are a number of options available for them. The best treatment option for a patient is very different from patient to patient. The patient's needs, symptoms, goals, and tear characteristics are all considerations. We can go through the various options one by one. Option number one. If it's a minor tear and it doesn't bother them too much, one option is to leave it alone and live with it. If it doesn't hurt you, why fix it? In general, I tend to encourage my patients to approach things practically. If it doesn't prevent you from doing your desired activities, sleeping, working, or cause you pain on a daily basis, or affect your mood regularly, you may not need surgery. In other words, if it doesn't bother you too much, a reasonable option is to leave it be. And some meniscus tears do not bother people too much. This is a combination of factors tear size, location, type, and patient activity level. Now before we choose on option one, leaving alone, we should learn a few things about the natural history of meniscal tears, i.e. what happens to them if we do nothing. Well, most meniscus tears do not heal by themselves because they don't have the best blood supply to heal. If you cut your skin, there is immediate bleeding and in a few days time, the skin mends together and heals. The immediate bleeding with the skin cut bring, brings in healing cells. Contrast that to a bad hangnail. If you get a bad hangnail and leave it alone, what happens? Well, it continues to hang out there. It doesn't heal or go away. In fact, if you tug on it by mistake or it gets caught on something, as you use that finger, it can really hurt. And the reason it doesn't heal is that a hangnail, unlike a skin cut, doesn't have the best blood supply to heal. 
Now most meniscus tears don't have a good blood supply. Some do, but they are the minority. In fact, the meniscus is broken down into three zones based on the amount of blood supply or vascularity it receives. Red, red, white, red, white, white. And the color reference denotes the amount of blood flow or vascularity. Meniscus tears are often characterized by the blood flow amount and therefore its healing ability. As you may have guessed, red red tears have good blood supply and have the potential to heal, while white white tears don't have much blood supply and typically don't heal. If we choose to leave it alone, another common question is whether a meniscus tear, if left alone, will get worse. And the answer is that, is that it can potentially get worse. Not often, but it is possible. The, the tear can extend and get larger. If the knee continues to see the same or worse stresses, this tends to be relatively uncommon, people will often feel the tear bother them and back off of those activities. Another common question is, will the meniscus tear, if left alone, cause damage to the surrounding structures in the knee? Like the hyaline cartilage or ball bearing cartilage surfaces of the knee? And the answer is, maybe a little bit. There is definitely inflammation, which is annoying to the surrounding knee, and there may be some mechanical abrasion to the surrounding knee, but mostly the knee stays intact as is. There are important considerations when deciding what to do with the meniscus, but in the end, I ask patients to approach it practically. If it doesn't prevent you from de doing your desired activities, sleeping, working, or cause you pain on a daily basis, or affect your mood regularly, or affect your lifestyle regularly, it is reasonable to leave it alone. However, if you answered yes to any of those questions, consider fixing the meniscus. In line with option number one is option number two, treating the tear symptomatically, but not fixing it with surgery. You can leave the meniscus alone, but help the symptoms with pain medications, anti-inflammatories, ice, heat, cortisone injections. These tend to be more temporary or palliative or pain relieving options that can help with the pain and inflammation but only for a short time because there is a true underlying mechanical problem, i.e. the torn meniscal shock absorber pad. In other words, the pain will come back once the medication is worn off because the meniscus tear is still present. If the patient has a lot of problems, then we can consider arthroscopic surgery or option number three. This involves a surgical procedure where we arthroscopically or by minimally invasive techniques remove the torn fragments so it doesn't bother the patient anymore. This is what we call arthroscopic partial, medial, or lateral meniscectomy. In other words, we take an arthroscopic instrument and clip out just the torn fragment or the hangnail deep inside the knee. We want to leave as much of the good shock absorber pad as we can because you need that pad for the rest of your life. The procedure itself takes less than one hour. Patients are able to go home the same day and start putting weight on the leg right away. People are able to return back to daily activities quickly, and some people are able to return back to their sports in as short as two or three weeks. If the tear is in the right location and the right pattern, we can also consider repairing the meniscus tear with stitches in order to get it to heal. This is called a meniscal repair. Finally, sometimes tears are so big and so bad that we have to replace the meniscus with a transplant. That's another option for younger patients who need a good shock absorber pad for the rest of their lives. At SCOE, we believe in patient education. We actually record the surgery at the time of surgery and burn it onto a disc that you can take home the same day of your surgery. Nowadays, it's actually in HD. I don't believe many other groups, if any, perform this voluntarily. We do this for a few reasons. First. We feel it's important for our patients to understand what's happening. There is nothing like taking a guided tour narrated by your surgeon in HD and seeing the meniscus tear and the treatment performed. We want to educate our patients because we feel as the patient, we would want to know what happened. In addition, we also take pride in our work and are more than happy to show you the work that we do. To learn more about meniscus tears, please visit our website at www.scoi.com. Thank you for your time.